What is up? Welcome back to this episode of the Road to Redemption podcast. I'm, as always, your host, Cam Williamson. Kind of a gray, drizzly day day here in Tennessee, which is appropriate kind of for what we're going to kick the show off with. Yesterday at approximately 2.30 in the afternoon, Boulder, Colorado, there was a mass shooting. A man uh, entered a store. I forget the name of the grocery store. It seemed like it was pretty local to Colorado, but it seemed like it was a staple place that people went in the southern part of Boulder, Colorado. Guy raised alarm out in the parking lot. He was wielding a long gun, is all they've called it thus far, but by the sounds in the footage, you could pretty much tell he had an AR. Entered, opened fire. Um, The police responded within minutes. The one officer, the first officer on the scene who encountered him, um was fatally shot and the suspect was apprehended once the rest of the police showed up. So that is all we officially know. They have, as of like an hour ago, released the names of the victims. They notified the victims' families between last night and this morning and they know almost nothing else. They did release the suspect's name. His first name was Ahmad. Last name, I don't remember. It was just hard to pronounce. I hope that we don't play too much into that yet. And yeah, it's it's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. So just to say that, I'll go on to talk about how I actually feel about everything that's going on. We're a couple, maybe a week and a half removed from eight people dead in Atlanta, Georgia, where a male opened fire into multiple salons, killing eight. I had a lot of questions in that as to how he made it to multiple salons without raising alarm as he went to and from each one. I don't know the details about these cases, so if you do, please feel free to leave them in the comments and educate me as to what you know, but please leave a link to your source as well so I can see that and check it out. I'd like to do my full research. Within that, we have the coronavirus. We have a lot of stuff tied into that. We have a lot of anxiety in the world. Mental health cases are on the rise because people have been locked down. People feel like their rights are being violated. Some people are just scared because of a virus that they believe is that dangerous. I'm not saying which way to go. I'm saying that there's a lot of people struggling for their own reasons. I don't want to be so quick. Um, now, you know, the things like stop Asian hate, this has been a thing since the parlor shooting, the suspect in that one came out and said that race wasn't a thing and that hard to believe, but Hey, I, if he says it's not a thing, then I don't know what else people really want. I, I'm not saying he didn't target a certain group of people, but I think that we're using these opportunities to further politicize something that's already been politicized enough being the coronavirus pandemic and where that is. I have never, never met a person who has blamed or even heard it in passing. I've not heard of anyone who's blamed the coronavirus on any race of people. Uh, I heard people trying to nail you know or then president trump to the wall because he called it like the chinese virus or something and like rightfully so he should have been kind of criticized for that just because whether it originated there or not that's just not a smart thing to do like wherever the flu came from we didn't call it the whatever virus from wherever that started so yeah that's not smart but It's also not something that he did with the intention of starting a hate towards a certain race of people. It's just getting so exhausting at this point because now when terrible shit happens, you have to, you know, back in the day we looked at the, and we're going to get to this later, all the issues that Colorado seems to have. But like when Columbine happened, that was in Colorado as well, you just knew that those were sick people, two sick kids who were really, really struggling, and you didn't have to go, well, there were two white kids, and they shot up, then when they shot the kids, they shot this many black kids, this many white kids, we are so much faster today, we want to know that fact, like, they named off the name and the age of all the people that were killed, and 
Oddly enough, it was a pretty even split of this past one of the 10 that were killed. Like the first three that they named off were in their 20s, like 20s to early 30s. Second group was 30s to like late 40s. And then third group was there was three people that were like 50s to late 60s. It was just weird. I find it very odd how all these things seem to stack up together. And I noticed that the one thing... I think it was the congressman um, for Colorado was saying he was like, people are just tired. He's like, they're tired of being afraid. All this fear needs to end. And he was almost leading it to believe that like maybe the suspect did this as an example as to like, look, you aren't keeping anyone safe by keeping everything locked down and all these masks mandates and stuff. They're thinking that that may be, you know, a, a motive here. But even I'm guessing. So please don't take anything that I say as a credible source in this matter because I'm just guessing here as well. I think that um, mental illness was clearly involved. If we haven't learned anything in the last two years, it's that's the number one key in all this. Sure, he was probably on some substance. I just dropped my phone, yes. Um, I know that there's going to be tons of people that can't wait to mention the fact that weed is legal in Colorado, and does this affect it? Well, that needs to actually be looked at. What were his medications? What was he taking? What did he possibly stop taking? All these things need to come into play. I like in this situation, one of the first things that I heard, the press you know, person, whoever handles other PR stuff, she came up first and she goes, look, man, we're going to release the names of the victims. We're going to release the names of the uh, the name of the suspect. Don't give this guy the notoriety that he so wants. Like, and that is something I've sang this song on everything that I've ever talked about, that we need to stop making these people famous. If we stop making their names known, and we were just talking about this in the last one, There's a real problem going on right now where we're like idolizing serial killers and we're making movies out of them and we're making shows about them. We got to stop that because we're encouraging these types of people who are on the brink of doing these horrific things that are battling with it in their head going, should I do this? Should I not do this? And then they're like, well, look, people love these people like and they, you know, people and I posted this on social media. I can only relate it to people who have suicidal thoughts. They don't go, well, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to just deal with what happens later. Well, somebody who's probably thinking in the realm of mass shootings, and I'm only doing some criminal minds type shit here, but they're probably only thinking, this is going to get me what I want in the sense of I am of some notoriety to them means worth in life because it's going to get them some sort of clout. It's like a kid when they're young being bad, whether it's good attention or bad attention, the kid just wants attention. So if you're giving them that and they see that, look, people are like fucking idolizing Ted Bundy and all these other crazy ass serial killers. Why are we not in a sense encouraging this shit? We have people strung across whatever. My wife and I were just talking about Twitch. There's these young kids on Twitch for days and hours screaming this crazy shit at each other. And then they go and when they finally get off the fucking Twitch or the PS5, they turn on Netflix and there's serial killer documentaries on. And then we want to wonder why people are throwing shit at each other in the streets and trying to fuck each other up every time we you know, get around each other. Well, our anxiety level of being around each other is up here. Nobody's been allowed to be around each other for the last year. We don't remember what it's like to be out in public for real. I freak out every time I go to the store because I'm afraid, like, is somebody going to pop off at me? Am I doing the wrong thing? Am I wearing a mask? Okay, I'm wearing the mask. I should be good, but is some asshole going to come yell at me and call me a pussy because I've got my mask on when I just don't want to make anybody uncomfortable? So, but then the one time I forgot to put it on, I felt like the biggest dickhead in the world, like everyone was staring at me like I had a third fucking head. 
and I just, I, I feel it. So I'm not going to act like it's not out there in everyone else's vantage point as well, because the anxiety around people is at an all time high. It's not just like veterans, law enforcement and shit that's dealing with like PTSD and dealing with large crowds. It's everybody now. Because when you're going to the store, you're getting hacked down, not just ones and twos, which would be terrible enough. Ten people got murdered on a Monday afternoon at a suburban fucking grocery store. But what? We're going to tune in tonight to the next fucking serial killer movie that Netflix drops. I don't want to hear anything about anybody feeling bad for nobody. If you entertain that type of shit, if you sit around watching that kind of stuff and you share it and you tell your friends, oh, you got to watch this. You got to check this out, man. I don't want you don't have sympathy for nobody. You damn sure don't have sympathy for the victims of these families because you're letting the people who did it somehow profit off of this shit. I'm not saying the serial killers that committed the crimes are profiting off the documentaries that being made off of them, but somebody is profiting off of the tragedies that are happening. I'm not saying you can't tell stories, but fuck, what are we doing? We're idolizing this shit now. Freddy Krueger and Jason and Michael Myers, these were fictional characters that we used to like you know, ooh, it was scary around Halloween time. We're telling all these fucking stories all the time now. And it's just with for people who are on the internet, and this is rolling a bunch of topics all into one, with social media making everyone feel like they have to find that one thing that makes them popular, notable, or noteworthy. Look where trends are, and you're going to find where the issues lie. Drugs. Serial killers. Mental health. Oh. Let's see what our biggest fucking problems are in the country right now. But what are all of our trends? Our rappers won't shut the fuck up about taking Molly's Percocets and Zans and shit. Every day, Netflix is dropping a new goddamn serial killer documentary. And mental health cases are at an all-time high that go ahead and encompass both of those two first categories. So what are we doing? We're talking about people, quote-unquote, normal, everyday human beings, unwinding with serial killer documentaries. Like, it's harmless in nature, But when you look at stuff like this, it's hard not to connect at all. It's hard not to connect at all. And I think we just have to take back the personal responsibility that we hold. Obviously, the only person that holds responsibility in the Boulder, Colorado case is the person who did that. But we need to take responsibility as a country for the trends that we allow to become popular the names that we allow to become famous, and as always, what we give our attention to. Guys, that's going to go ahead and be the episode for this week. Please, I got some of the new merch up here in front of us. Go check out Road, the number two, redemptionpodcast.com. Guys, where attention goes, energy flows. You know I say that all the time. You know I love you, and you know I mean that. We'll check in with you next week. Stay tuned later on for the vlog. Love you.